his men were stationed at the Woodfield Inn to protect the local citizens from deserters, bushwhackers, and renegades. They used a secret room to hide gold, jewels, and other valuable possessions from marauding Yankees. And as in any war, it's the soldiers who go down in battle and the women who love them who create the legends. Some say a lady in white still roams the inn, looking for her soldier who never came home from the war. Thankfully, the most recent battles at the Woodfield Inn are just reenactments put on by men and women from Confederate and Federal brigades. Reenactors dedicate a great deal of time and money to make these historical pageants as authentic as possible. Primarily, uh, each of the men buy their own accoutrements and equipment. Uh, we buy our own tintage and we provide our own transportation. We work a lot with the National Park Service. We have been involved in the past in some of the movie making series that have been, uh, some as individuals, sometimes as units. A series uh, Lincoln, the North-South series, I think several of our people were involved in that. Uh, they were involved uh, with the initial opening shots of uh, Glory. Uh, I think those shots were from Gettysburg enactment back to the 125th anniversary series. And also uh, this thing, uh, Killer Angels uh, troops, some of our troops will be involved in that. And Lincoln, as I said. Whether North or South, the reenactors develop a unique personality, which is modeled after characters from history. Well, it comes reasonably easy. We don't really have to force much of a character. As I say, it's the 21st Infantry, uh, Ohio Infantry. Um, we're based out of Atlanta, and uh, we're part of the 14th Corps, which came through that area. And it helps, as you see, there's a, there's a shortage of federal troops. And one of the things that we do, of course, we uh, try and fill that void and are constantly trying to have a good federal presence, and therefore they have uh, it's no good if you've only got one side to play with, see. Yeah, I'd rather be a Confederate, but uh, <laughs> given the, I just take my orders, you know. <laughs> the pageantry unfolds during the long weekend. The soldiers and the inn become as one turning back the pages of history. Spectators are given the opportunity to step back in time. With such a ravenous period in time, they did need some type of military protection, and so they were authorized protection of the Southern troops who actually drilled out on these fields. So this is an ideal location uh, for this type of thing, for encampments, for uh, the skirmishes as we had, <clears throat> being historic as it is, and having the true appearance and that true aurora and romance of that period. So there's very little to do to modify or to change this location, which made it an ideal location for us. And so, there it is, a place out of time. Thomas Wolfe, F. Scott Fitzgerald, Carl Sandburg, 
they all found their way to these enchanted hills. Sandberg spent the last 22 years of his life right next door. His home and goat farm are a favorite with tourists. The Flat Rock Playhouse, North Carolina's official state theater, is just down the road. Challenging PGA golf is but minutes away at Kenmuir. There are trails to hike, streams to ride, and more beautiful scenery to see than almost any other place on earth. You can do artistic rubbings off the tombstones of famous people at St. John in the Wilderness Church. Or rub elbows with modern celebrities who, as in years gone by, always find their way to the Woodfield Inn. So if you're traveling through the roads of North Carolina, don't forget to stop by. There's always a rocker for you on our front porch. Years ago, when Carl Sandburg first visited the inn, he said, these walls talk to me. The Woodfield Inn will talk to you too. You just have to listen.